welcome to Abby's Den, I'm Abby. In this video, I'm going to share with you how to thread up your sewing machine so that you do it well every single time. I'm going to share. Let me talk to you about the accessories bag. Inside here, you'll see lots of different things. The first thing I want to point out are the bobbins. The key thing about these is you don't want to layer colours on colours. If you find you need more, you must buy the ones for your model of machine. So if, for example, you have lots of machines, what you want to try and do is put them in different compartments. So for my faff machine, it looks a bit messy in there, doesn't it? I've got lots of bobbins in there for when I use my faff machine. Here I have a couple of screwdrivers. Now you need to make sure you look after these. These are the ones that are going to open your machine so you can clean your machine after a project. Let's thread up the machine. Now in your bag, you have a selection of bobbins. Let me give you some advice. Use only the bobbins that come with the machine. Don't buy any generic brands. The next thing, use a good quality thread. You might want to choose and buy these kinds of threads which are great and they seem economical these moon threads are fantastic in your overlocker i wouldn't recommend them in a sewing machine and the same with these conical ones don't use these ones yes they are a great price but they are not going to be great for your machine they shred fibers before you thread up your machine you need to make sure your thread tape lever so that's that hook there is at the top and that the presser foot is lifted up. So the first thing we're going to do is fill the bobbin. Lift up the spindle there at the back, quite often that's hidden, that's a bit short for your thread, so make sure you've lifted it out. Don't pull it too hard. Make sure your thread, when you place that on the spindle, that it comes from behind. So the thread's coming from behind. I'm going to use two hands, and I'm going to hook it around the spring there and crisscross around the tension spring there and feed that end of the thread through these little holes that you see on your bobbin. There we go. Place your bobbin on the bobbin spindle there. Hold on to that thread. Keep that tight in your hand and push the bobbin towards the guide. Then we need to put our foot down all the way down on the pedal. Don't go halfway and don't keep lifting on and off. That will affect the tension of the thread and allow some of the thread to fill on the bobbin. And cut the thread right close to the bobbin there. Now what we should see is a nice even feed. If you find it's not feeding evenly, just hold it like that. Fill as much as you think you might need. I tend to go for about half a fill. Pull it back and remove the thread and you can cut that away. Now I'm holding on to it as it came off the bobbin because now I'm going to just drop it straight in to the machine down at the bottom so I don't change the direction it's going in. I'm going to leave the lid for a moment and I'm going to thread the top first. And we're going over this guide again but leave the tension spring, we don't need that now. We need this tension here and we're going to go up and around the take up lever. Go down and grab that hook just above the needle. And the best way to do it is grab the thread like this, two hands and scoop round. And then thread the eye of the needle. On your machine, there are other dials. And these, these can be quite daunting. You don't know really what they're for. Let me explain. So this is your stitch selector. And if you see here, we've got number one. Now there's three sub parts on this one. This is your buttonhole. And this will be split. If I go to that first one, 
it will do B for me. This one does A and C, and that one does D. So that's your buttonhole. It will do the bar tack first at the top. B will go to the zigzag on the side. C does another bar tack, and D does the zigzag going back up. Two, three, and four are zigzags. Five is three different sorts of zigzags, but these are special zigzags. This are called a satin stitch, and they stitch very close together. Now you've got lots of straight stitches here. You've got six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. They're different lengths of stitches. So I like to get people to work on the nine. The nine is a good stitch for inside seams. Ten is a good one for top stitching. So I like to call them the visual seams or the outside seams. So when you're making a dress, for example, or a skirt or a pair of trousers, you want to use nine for the inside. But when you add the pockets and all the hemming and all sorts of different features, you want the seam to be noticed, you will use stitch ten. Eleven is great for things like pin tucking. Twelve is a blind hem. 13 is a tricot zigzag, so that's a three-step zigzag. And that's great to stop fraying or it's great to add elastics. It's also great for hemming uh, fabric so it doesn't fray. And 14 is also a blind hem. That one's great for stretch fabric. Okay, so now we've got this dial here. This is the tension. What that is, is the two little plates inside the machine that squeeze on the thread and they allow the freedom of move, movement for that thread. So if you pull that thread through the tension discs, put the presser foot down because that's when they're activated. It's hard to pull that thread through. It becomes tight, there's a tension on there. When you lift that presser foot up, those discs open and that thread moves freely. And you can tell if they're through the tension discs is, if if I remove that thread out, put the presser foot down and try and pull on that thread, it should be hard for me to move. And you'll see that the needle starts getting yanked. So I know I've threaded the machine up correctly. Another if thing. feature on machines, whether it be here, sometimes it's here above the needle, is this button. And it's got a backwards arrow. That shows me it's the reverse and it works on a spring you need to keep it held in action. What that does is it reverses the feed dogs. So instead of the feed dogs allowing the fabric to go forward and behind, so the fabric moves away like that, what it does is if I keep that pressed down, it adjusts the feed dogs so that now the fabric sort of starts coming back this way. And the reason we do that is to lock our stitches. You sew, Reverse, go back over them and lock them in. They are going to be securely held. And that's a really good feature. All machines have that, even the ancient ones. Let me explain these features here. So along your needle plate, you can see lots of different numbers. They represent the distance from the needle. Those numbers there are in millimetres and the numbers at the back are in inches. You can usually tell because the millimetres are usually in 10, 20, 30 and 40. Although you do have a 15 because lots of projects want you to work on a 15 millimetre seam allowance. So that seam allowance is the amount of fabric left on the edge when you're sewing. So if you have two layers of fabric like this you lay them together and you would lay the edge of the fabric along the 15 put the presser foot down and i'm going to use a reverse button to secure the stitches and i stitch five stitches i don't need to do any more than that three would have been fine press the reverse and the fabric goes the other way around in the opposite direction. So I've got back to the start of the fabric again and I can follow that 15 and make sure I have a seam allowance of one and a half centimetres all the way along the fabric. And I get to the end of the fabric 
press the reverse button again the five stitches back and five stitches forward and don't go off your fabric and bring your needle and hook back to the top so the groove is back at the top then lift the presser foot up release the fabric and bring it around the cutter and pull down and you can see the stitches have been locked there and there and that now is held securely and the threads won't be able to be pulled out i'm going to stitch along the bottom now press the foot down i'm going to just the stitches going back are always smaller than the stitches going forward this time i'm not using this on the guide i'm using the edge of the foot along the edge of the pattern fabric this has a selvage that's been marked by the manufacturer and i don't want to use that as my selvage i'll trim that off after I finish sewing. So I'm going to use this edge of the foot, which is 10 millimeters, that's one centimeter, and it will give me a one centimeter seam allowance. And I reverse at the back at the other end. Now hook back up to the top and that groove back at the top, lift up the press of foot, Scoop the fabric out. Just check the stitches are there and they are. I'm quite pleased with that. I can remove that now or I can leave it there. right. So there we go. I've sewn all along the side there and all along the bottom. Now the edges of this fabric are called raw and the reason they're called raw is because they've not been woven by the machines in the factory. They've been cut by maybe you or maybe the shopkeeper. So they're called raw edges. And what happens with them is the fibers start fraying. So can you see how the fabric is starts to fray? Well, we need to stop that from happening because this will be no good to us if the fabric starts falling apart from the inside out. So we have options. On this machine, we can do a zigzag all the way down. There's lots of different seam finishes. But the way I'm going to do one of the sides here is I'm going to use a pair of pinking shears. Now, pinking shears are zigzag scissors. And I get told off quite often for calling them zigzag scissors to the kids. They like to know that they're called pinking shears. So what you do is you just cut along and I'm going to cut along that white selvage line there. Now, really, I don't need to cut that away because it's a woven edge and it won't fray. There we go. And you end up with a zigzag and that will help prevent fraying. Now the other option is you can run a zigzag along the edge and we'll do that now. So on the machine, stitch 13 is a really good stitch to use. It's called a tricot. I'm going to lay the edge, so the raw edge of the fabric, so it's on the inside of that oval because that's how wide my needle can go you see the needle can go the whole width of that oval so if I lay that down there like that and I'm on the zigzag what will happen now is can you see where that I'm doing it by hand it'll go just to the edge of the fabric there so I'm going to eyeball it. I'm keeping the fabric there along that edge. So it's where that mark is on the foot. And there you go. So we've got a nice zigzag along the edge of the fabric. You can trim that away if you want to. It's only because I've been playing about with it and pulling at it that the raw edges are now frayed. So you can trim those if you want to. And there's the zigzag pinking.